Jim Montgomery is the program manager with the City of, of Ottawa Office of Emergency Management. Jim has worked for 32 years, Jim worked for 32 years with the Ottawa Police Service, principally with service in the Emergency, emergency Operations Division. He finished, finished his career with police services on the Sakama with the City of Ottawa Office of Emergency Management, where in 2009 he was appointed as program manager. Over the past five years, he has played a critical role in the implementation of a comprehensive and integrated emergency management program. Jim is the recipient of a large and very impressive number of provincial, national, and international designations in emergency management. It would take me a number of minutes to read them all, so I'm not going to do that, but I'd like to introduce you to Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity as well. You heard about what they can do technically in order to, to try and mitigate exactly what's going to happen. What I want to talk to you is what you can do technically to mitigate what's going to happen to you. Is one of the programs we run, it's called Are You Ready? And it's basically the question to you, are you ready for flooding? Next slide, please. So basically, we can't predict the future. Is we work very closely with all our partners and stakeholders. Uh, it was very interesting last year as we were talking almost daily. And there were some nights I know I was going to bed and figuring at some point the phone's going to ring because we're going to, it's going to be flooding. Especially, we can't predict Mother Nature here, but weather forecast happened last year is Mother Nature was not kind to us. In the end, she laughed at us and then walked away and left us very scared. But reality is Mother Nature, we're very much at her hands. And you hear that they, they try to do as much as they can technically to mitigate this, but the reality is emergencies can happen at any time. And we recognize that. October 22nd, who would have ever predicted that in the city of Ottawa? The reality is we have to be ready. So personally, we have to be ready as well. So what do you need to do? You need to make sure you can take care of yourself. And what I mean that by that is individually as an individual, but also your property. As you heard Luke mention, what's the catch basin? It's very simple, go and clear your catch basin. Because the reality is if you can mitigate what's going to happen to your property and take some proactive action, you're going to reduce what's going to happen. So best protection is knowing what to do. You see some interesting pictures on the left and on the right. Is the reality on the left is, yeah, the cruiser did drive down the road, but they had, a, they had a response program where they relied on the kids to get them out of the predicament. <laughs> <laughs> they were prepared. On the right, as you see, that's from the Glen Karen floods. Uh, these words I can use as we use time and time again, a significant rain event is again Mother Nature came and laughed at us and left us holding something. The reality is the, all the infrastructure was in place basically to deal with what's normal. It was very abnormal in one hour, it was 105 millimeters of rain. It was not ready for that. And so we left, left the reality is we, we have to figure out something is how do we prepare for this? And the reality is you need to take action inside your residence. Next slide. Best one is know know what your hazards are. Is do a hazard assess uh, sorry a hazard identification risk assessment when it comes to flooding. Is we talk about the hundred or the five year floodplain mapping. They are available online at Ottawa.ca. Go in and see where exactly who is in a floodplain here. If you look at the maps, you know how much at risk you are. And the reality is, it doesn't mean every hundred years you're going to get flooded. It doesn't mean every five years it's going to come to speak. It's just basically it's a, uh, an average. I guess is the word I can use. Make a plan. What to do to protect yourself, your family, and your property. Is actually sit down. Yeah, you have to sit down probably at the kitchen table with everybody in the family and decide what is it we're going to do. And it's very simple. is to start taking action. Because once you start a checklist, is what can we do? What do we do? If you go on the website again, ottawa.ca, and type in uh, Are You Ready? I think there's a series of, I'm going to rely on my technical experts from Are You Ready? I think there's probably about a dozen different checklists on there from everything from, from what to put in your car, uh, to your personal preparedness again and for flooding as well. Next slide. So again, it's have a plan that details the action you can take. Have an emergency kit that will support you. Again, 72 hours is what we use. Is reality is sometimes if we have to evacuate, we ask you to be ready to support yourself for 72 hours. Sometimes that's you as an individual. We as a municipality cannot get to you, especially if it's a, a widespread disaster. Is again, is life safety comes first, so you know where we're going. Is lights and siren are going to those, help those that are critically injured when it comes to just infrastructure damage? That's probably priority three. Is we'll get to you, but we ask you for that 72 hour window. Sign up for alerts from authorities, the different conservation authorities, etc. They actually have an alerting type mechanism. You heard about the different triage, the three stages as well. One of the things we're trying to implement within the city is a public facing notification system as well. Uh, we're looking at different systems right now. 
Um, and basically what it is, it'll be a self-registration. You sign up for the, for the alerts, and then they're basically a, a checkbox as to what kind of alert do you want to receive. Do I want to receive weather flooding related alerts? And then you receive those. We hope, touching wood, to have that implemented this year. Uh, it's a long process because we want to make sure we get the right system that meets the needs of the users. It's not about us. It's very easy to put the information in, but what is it you need? So we'll probably see a survey coming out later in the year as well as to what, what it is that people need to know. We've looked at many systems across North America. There's a really a wide myriad of different systems, but it's, again, what do our citizens need? Let's make sure we build it right. Then know on how, when to contact the utilities. Reality is if you have to leave the house, one of the first primary is what? Shut off your gas, shut off your hydroelectricity. Do you have that contact information? Can you make those arrangements and get it done in a timely manner as well? Again, once it's shut off, again, it's the reverse process to turn it back on. And again, what happens is normally when we, we redo a re-entry into a neighborhood, what's everybody want turned on right away? Their hydros, their utilities, whether it's gas. Again, you have to work with Enbridge Gas again. We have to, it's going to take some time. So it's back to the remediation of the, of the action taken. Next slide, please. Protect your valuables. Um, one of the things we see, uh, historically you saw that house in Glen Karen where they actually basically brought everything out of the basement, is if you know you're living a floodplain, then take proactive action this time of year. You start moving those really valuable items that are irreplaceable, we'll move them to a higher location in your house. The other thing is put them in a waterproof container, at least that way they float and you can pick them off the, the top surface and move them out. But you see a lot, we see a lot of it is, is exactly that Glen Karen situation is people have not taken the action. Now, in Glencairn, they had no idea this was coming. It was, like I say, that all of a sudden Mother Nature laughed at us. Review or get your flood insurance. Some people, those in the floodplain, do you have flood insurance? Can you get flood insurance? No. Yeah, some of you can't, I know. And I know I, live in, I lived in Glencairn. Um, my flood insurance went up quite a bit, and my deductible became $5,000 all of a sudden. I never made a claim. But again, because I was identified in that area, oh, I can still get it. But there's, there's no value in it. Uh, installation of backflow valves. The city has a very good program through uh, Environmental Service Division Department, sorry, um, for the installation of backflow valves. Uh, there is an application process. There is an assessment that goes in place as well as to where you live and, and do you qualify as well. But there is funding in place for those backflow valves, as well as sump pumps, obviously. Uh, very, very prevalent in the rural society as well. Landscape planning, natural berms or barriers, planters. Anything from just a simple wood planter out front will protect your low-lying windows because what's where's the water going to enter your residence? It's probably through the windows if it's the, uh, the exterior flooding. So again, when it comes to sandbagging, is sandbagging those lower openings. Uh, we see a lot of people that they make the demand they want a thousand sandbags, they want to build the berm, ten sandbags high all around the property. You have a natural berm there already in your foundation. So what do you want to burn? Is the lower openings, the windows and the doors, etc. And again, as you said earlier, is clear the catch basins. That's, I mean, I want to be in my laneway and, and use the snowblower, thank God, in the winter, but keep it clear, keep it clear. It's been interesting this year. We touch wood again, because we're in very good shape this year. Next. Again, take the steps you see in the fire, as I mentioned about the checklist, uh, the utilities, and then my contacts. If you have to evacuate your house, make sure you only have to make one phone call and you, everybody knows where you've gone. Um, I'll go back to October 22nd, one of the first, and actually the earthquake in 2013. <coughs> when the first thing that goes down is sell your phone network. Nobody's talking to anybody. What do we rely, all rely on? So make sure that you just have to do that one phone call or a text or a BBM, a BlackBerry message, and get that message. This is where I've gone to my alternate location. Next one. We do have an emergency plan. Um, you see there some of the stakeholders and partners. Um, I'll use the term, we're willing to work with anybody. Anybody that can help, anybody that can assist, is we will work with anybody. Um, in regards to the Conservation Authority's Red Cross, uh, sorry, Parks Canada, um, Ottawa River Regulatory Planning Board, uh, Public Works, Ministry of Natural Resources, Provincial and everything else. We actually, uh, last year, I think we were doing conference calls probably about every three days at one point. It was quite a regular basis. We've already we already started conference calls in regards to the Rideau River, uh, or sorry, the Ottawa River uh, with the Provincial Ministry of Natural Resources, the Pembroke District. We did a conference call last year, last week. Um, but everybody's saying the same thing, is things look good, touch wood, unless Mother Nature decides to play a very cruel trick with us. We do have an emergency management plan. It is a city-centric, and I mean by that services, emergency plan. It's how we, the city, will work together, and it's functions-based. So who is responsible for, for the, for the roads, the surface of the roads is we know it's public works. 
who's responsible for infrastructure below the roads. We know it's environmental services or infrastructure. So everybody has a very defined functional role, and we actually assign responsibility. You will be responsible. Figure out who your partners and who's supporting you to help you accomplish what you need to do. Next slide. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty simple though. <laughs> well, it is. So really, is what I mentioned about all the different services. So that's all the services. They have what we call service command center. So they work together. They communicate back and forth. What are you doing? What do you need help from me, et cetera, et cetera. And going through that, you actually have on site is somebody who's in charge. What am I seeing? What needs to be done? And how can I help? And how can I work with everybody? We have a support group here as well. Again, I mentioned with those operational level partners, we work with them very closely. We work with the city manager and the, the basically the managers in, within city as well as to get us that strategic support we need. Usually that's human resources, financial resources, and material resources. That's what it comes down to. They're the ones that make it very easy for us to get to mayor and council to get those resources. We also work with strategic level partners, including our provincial partners. The so Provincial Emergency Operations Center is very clearly, as you mentioned earlier, is we have a we have a responsibility to report to them any type of emergency that we're involved in. We actually get proactive when we see something coming, we'll actually phone them and give them a heads up. This is what we're seeing, this is what we're preparing for, this is what we're getting ready for. So they have the heads up. Here in Ottawa as well, there's the Federal Government Operations Center. Um, again, we liaise with them. If we see something emerging, because of the number emerging, the number of, of staff that they have federally here in the, in the city as well, is we give them a heads up as well, so we engage them as well. So they have situational awareness, again, so they can communicate to their employees. Where do their employees live? In the city of Ottawa. So again, we're communicating through them with a whole pile of different, different residents as well. We use the term we are ready because very much internally we are making sure, we started a program uh, three years ago now, I think it is, is we are ready. It's making sure as much as we can go talk to the public and say, are you ready? I mean, the public's looking at us and going, well, are you ready? So we started very much proactive, we are ready, is we put structure in place, we've trained people, we've gone through, we've rehearsed and everything else. So we're getting to the point, do I say we're 100% ready? No, because again, we don't know what the next emergency will be. So we use what we call an all hazards aspect, is it's the same processes, irregardless of what the hazard is. Yes, when it comes to some specific hazards, flooding, we, need, we know we may need sandbags. So again, we put those processes in place as well. Next slide. Uh, mentioned about 311. Um, definitely your best conduit always, always, always to get assistance from the city. Yes, sometimes there is a delay because of the, because the influx of number of calls, but please bear with them with 311. One of the things we'll try to do is, where's my 311 slide? Uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the term, but they, they actually put on the front messaging as soon as you dial into 311. If you're calling about flooding push two, is once we realize what the real hazard is, what everybody's concerned is, we'll put that message at the front so we can triage the calls as they come in and get to you and get you the right service. But it is if it is a service call, please call 311. That'll get you the fastest service because it does create a work order. Um, the Are You Ready uh, at Ottawa.ca. We have a, an individual that's responsible for public education and awareness, and that's their full time job. So again, if you have any questions at all, by all means, email that address, and we'll try to get back to you again within 24 hours and get our response back to you. But remember, the best protection in emergency is knowing what to expect, back to do that hazard identification, your risk assessment, and then knowing what to do. What should you do about this? Excellent. If not, to become mobile homes or houseboats. <laughs> Thank you very much.